Welcome back to another episode of Diamonds in the Rough. Uh, it is officially Christmas Eve, Eve, December 23rd. Uh, we're fired up to be back. Got an awesome interview for you later on. Um, you got a word from our sponsor, Chanel? Or no, not today? No, not today. Not today, not today. No. We'll, we'll get back on that. We'll get, yeah. <laughs> we'll get back on that later. Um, boys are back together. Got an awesome show for you planned. Let's roll. Get it down to the neon lights. It's where I want to be because I'm just trying to make it. You're listening to the Diamonds in the Rough podcast. I'm just trying to make it. Powered by Prospects Live. All right. Big weekend. Big weekend for me. Not really sure what happened with y'all. But, uh, yep. Locked hit, it, hit us with it. How'd it go? It went good. All is planned. Uh, yeah. Big shout out to, to the team. Uh, my boy Griffin Rudy, his girlfriend Hallie, my two friends Maggie and Annie, they uh they were the behind the scenes. I got a they put it together. Now, I had a spot that I wanted to do it on campus at UGA, uh, and so they went and scouted it out like the week before, and a lot of people were taking grad pictures there. So they're like, mm-hmm. no, "You don't need to do it there. We got another spot for you. You need to go." So I got a drawing, and and we can post these on Twitter, but. I got a drawing sent to me of where she should stand and where I should stand. And then Griffin gave me about a two and a half minute, like park to spot video of how to get there. And there was this part of the video where we walk up the stairs and there's a road where you're supposed to take to get there. And he's like, do not go there. Somebody's going to be hiding. You have to go this way. So show me the way to go. So the next day when we're going up there, like my heart's pumping, obviously I'm like, I told Kenzie, like, it was her birthday, so it was easy to get her there. I was like, hey, I got something planned for your birthday. Like, just be ready at 3.30. We got to leave at 3.30. So we get there. We walk up the stairs, and I'm like, you ever been here before? She's like, yeah, I've been here once. And so I was like, all right. So we get there, and she says, wait, the Founders Garden's this way. I was like, nah, we got to go down this road. (laughs) 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 You can't go to that one. (laughs) But then it worked out. I had some some flowers laid out in the spot to, like, lure her over there. And so she went over there, and then it just it happened, and it was just quick. When uh, when she saw the flowers, did she know it was happening? No, she thought that was a surprise. So I told her the whole time. I was like, "It's not big. Like, don't get all, don't get your hopes up. I'm just want to do something for your birthday." And so we got there, and I was like, "Yep, see, I told you it wasn't big." But she loves flowers, so she was happy about that anyway. And then, yeah, then I pulled it out, pulled out the big guns. Wow, she, she wasn't prepared at all either. Was no, she? no, she had no idea I had a ring or nothing. Yeah, I went full commando. You told me that she didn't even, she didn't think like you made it sound to her like you weren't ready to do it for a yeah. while. Yeah, and I've just played dumb when like some of her friends have been engaged, like talking about rings and stuff. Like I act like I had no idea. Literally, she you know I'm I'm just like I'm a ring expert. I don't I don't yeah. know what <laughs> I don't know what field of study that is, but um a PhD. You're a gymnast? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that what it is, gymnology? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It sounds right, though. A yeah, jewelist. So, so it, all, it all went as planned, which is, you know, it's great to have a plan come together. I texted out. I didn't tell any of her friends or nothing until she left town. because She came home for the weekend and went back to Athens. And as soon as she left, I texted her friends, and I didn't think that any of them come. Like, I was going to have her something afterwards, and they all showed up. So, clearly, they nice. like her a lot. Nice. That's always good. Yeah. Under underestimated her pool, I guess. Did you guys go get a nice dinner after? Yeah, we met both of our parents for dinner because they were coming up for a graduation anyway. So you just had to I just had to work it in so it wouldn't be expected. So is it before or after the graduation? It was before. It was her birthday, and then she graduated the next day. Nice. Big, so big had, weekend. Yeah, I was gonna say big weekend for her. Big weekend. Yeah, the graduation, you know, it was a graduation. It was it was yeah. kind of the the climax had already been had been done, and then we, we got to listen to everybody who got a PhD from UGA. So, congrats to everybody out there that did that. It was it was awesome. I'm seeing your face and name on the board. <laughs> how long did that take? <laughs> a while. Yeah. Uh, me and, <laughs> me and, this is how boring it got. So, they did it by last names, obviously, and each different field of study. So, like, it'd be uh, in science, like a PhD in science. So, those are going to be bigger ones. Yeah. So my dad was there and we started playing over unders on last name totals. I'd give him, <laughs> I'd give him like, <laughs> all right, B's four and a half. He'd be like, oh, over for sure. And then we'd see how many freaking people had last names with B. And That's we just hilarious. kept doing it. I was setting pretty good totals though. So 
anybody listening from, from Vegas need me to like start training odds making and stuff? I mean, I can't pick them, so I might as well make them. Yeah, yeah. I've been uh, I've been going crazy with the bets today. There's been some heavy college basketball. Yeah, I, I've missed I've missed both of them, but I, I have bets all the way throughout the day. So huge, huge day for you. Yeah, I had the under in the Notre Dame game that got absolutely demolished. Uh, I had the over in the Texas game. They had it was over 131, and I think they had uh, 54 points at halftime combined. So. Nice. Nice. So feeling good, but I have a uh, Liberty plus two and a half and they were up by eight or nine going into half. So they're up by five right now. Yeah. And it's left Clock. making me, that makes me yeah. feel good. Yeah. So big game for Illinois tonight. They play Missouri. That's their like rivalry rivalry game every year. The bragging rights. Really? Game, so, oh yeah. I know that. Yeah. I know that it was, yeah. Missouri was in the big 12, right? For SEC. Um, yeah. I think yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. I took the over in that game just because I know I'm going to be watching it. So I got to cheer for something. Yeah, you need coach. I think it would be a close game. Somewhere. Like, even when those, I think it's like 13 or 14 points right now for Illinois, but those games are always close. So I almost consider taking Missouri just because every time they play, it's a close game. You've been, uh, you've been watching any horses lately? No, my buddy's over right now, though. And, uh, I was like, should we watch the horses today? No joke. I was like, should we bet on the horses today? But he wasn't about it. Well, no, he'd be about it. I just I haven't pulled him up. We might if there's a break in between games, I might throw him up on the screen. My see goal what we can do. But when I look five, when somebody asks me, where do you see his podcast in five years? I'm like, hopefully we have a horse, a diamonds in the rough horse. I don't know what we call yeah. her. But she would have no limp. She would be black for sure. And what else? I think we have to name her Lacey Haiti instead yeah, of Hasty Lady. We that, horse, to... that horse is unbelievable. So me yeah. and Chanel would come home from rehab. And it's just, you know, just kind of to tell a look in of, of what we were going through. And there's, I mean, there's so many horse races throughout the day. Like you have no idea how many there are. There's like 16 tracks that go all day long. <laughs> yeah, literally all day. There's like probably at least seven races every day. And there's so Schnell had, we thought we had a system. I mean, we kind of had a system. No, we did. Day we one and day system. two, we had a system. And so it was we, we turned on the live stream about 10 minutes before the race and we'd scout the horses, how they walked, how they were acting. You know, did they have a limp? Did they have a little, a little glitch in their hip? Oh, yeah. Were they too excited? So we had to factor in all this stuff. And we play some some what are they? Obviously to win. You can you can bet on a horse to win. You can bet on a horse to place, which is top two. Yeah, and then and show show top three. So it, I mean, that's what we did. We we watched horses and and freaking had our system. And sometimes it worked, and sometimes it did not. Day one, I had pick three. That was big time for me. Yeah, yeah that's so that's about the highlight of my horse betting <laughs> career was the pick three. That was the most yeah. electric thing. And the funniest part is we had no idea, like, if we put $5 on a horse to yeah. show, and they did show, we had absolutely no clue how much we were going to win. We just, like, zero. waited 20, zero. We just waited like, 20 zero minutes, like, looking at our phone, and it was like, oh, 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 we would win four bucks. We're like, yes, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> the best is when I would have so many bets in on horses that I would be cheering for the wrong thing because I had no yeah. idea what I'd have. I'd be cheering for, like – the number five well, horse, and I would well, need like three, four, and seven <laughs> to be the top three, and I'm cheering for five to win. Well, that one day you got you got greedy and left your system and started placing bets on, on different courses. Yeah, different. I would, I, like if there were three races at the same time, I'd be yeah. watching one of them, and I wasn't able to see the horse that I was betting on. And you just you that. fall in love with the horses. That's what happens. You start doing it, you fall in love with them. But um, yeah, that lasted for like a week or so. Yeah. And then uh, probably longer. We, we, we would dabble on the horses when well, we, we football some excitement. On, on the weekends, we didn't need it. Yeah. Like once Usually Thursday it was like started, Wednesdays. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday, horses. What do you got on uh, old uh, JT Daniels having the, the vid? Yeah. It's, I mean, it looks like a lot of people are starting to have COVID. I don't, I don't know if y'all saw, but the NCAA just put, put in place like, protocols in case i mean yeah. ncaa like they literally just don't ever tie their shoes and just continually trip over them like that 
that's one of the dumbest things I've ever seen. Like, why even put those limitations out now? Wasn't it? Didn't like, they why? Say that why was, is there a limit to when the national championship can be played? Yeah. What else is behind it? What? Yeah, just else. wait till both teams are healthy and play it. So yeah, I mean, this just to me in my brain, and this is how bad it's been. Um, it just seems like another way George is going to get screwed. So. Yeah. Well, I do have I do have a lock for anybody who's going to be well. I mean, this isn't going to be out yet, but Lance Stevenson's with your Hawks for a ten day contract. So the take is over. <laughs> so for ten for the next ten days, whenever you see the Hawks, take them because they have the greatest Lance, player of all time. Lance, all Steven, time Lance Stevenson playing in New York on Christmas is most CTV. Yeah, have to. <laughs> Whatever his prop is, over on all of them. Yeah, I saw he might not play tonight, but. They're going to work him in. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. And people are signing 10-day ten, ten contracts right now. Like yeah, Mac McClure yeah, A lot of whatever. people. Joe yeah. Johnson is coming back for the Celtics. Is he? Yes, wow. crossover Joe. I saw I saw crossover Joe pull up in transition so many times for the Hawks. I mean, <laughs> it's like ingrained in my mind. <laughs> crossover that was your go-to Joe. move. He just, he just pulled up in on a fast break for three, and it was just like, well, I mean, the Hawks are, you know, 20 and 60 at this time so <laughs> yeah but he's electric though yeah he was on oh, some yeah. good teams we, we put some players around him later in his later in his career yeah but let's uh let's transition over into because i think i know shook has one um i've already mentioned one of mine but let's go three one breaker two oh heater all right um i'll start with uh you know do breakers or heaters first uh, let's go breakers first. All right, breakers, three one breaker. Um, yeah, I, I honestly already hit on both of mine, kinda. But three one breaker is the fact that Georgia has a chance of being screwed by the by the COVID protocols. Just just a non necessary protocol being released by the NCAA. Um, and it always seems to backfire on Georgia. I mean, Todd Gurley gets suspended for signing autographs. AJ Green gets suspended for doing the same thing. Like. It's it just it's what happens. It's what happens when you're a Georgia sports fan and you come to accept it. So I, I've gotten past the point where I was, you know, still upset about the Bama game. I'd convinced myself that Georgia's going to win it all, and now we well, got COVID to worry about again. I mean, it literally feels like it did when I was playing for Georgia and our season got canceled and we were number one in, in the country. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's just full circle. We got COVID issues again, and Georgia is is playing for a national championship. Just that's a, a tough one. An yeah, absolute tough hammer. One. Yeah, that's it. I took a full swing. That's a doozy. I, I guess a, fastball. Yeah. Yeah. Hammer. Shook. Uh, we got to go first. Yeah. So, uh, my, my three one isn't that good, so I'm letting you guys go. Uh, I don't think mine's very good either. Uh, my three one breaker. So over the weekend, I took uh, me and my family, we take a trip every. It's kind of every other year, just as the way it falls. But we go to Pittsburgh and see oh, yeah. the Pens and Steelers play. And uh, this also ties into my two-o here. But so the Steelers game on Sunday, they played the Titans, and it was thirty-seven degrees, uh, like ten mile an hour winds. I was like, "This is gonna be fine. It's gonna be probably the best weather we've ever had because we always go around Christmas." Yeah. And one year we went when they played the Jets, and it was 19 degrees and, like, spit and snow, and it was mm. miserable. Mm. That's a couch game. Yeah. yeah. And, so, <laughs> <laughs> and so I go – I'm like, this is this weather's going to be great. So I go T-shirt, hoodie, jersey, and then just warm-up pants. Yeah. And when I tell you I was freezing that whole game, because, mm-hmm. like, I don't know what it is, but 37 degrees in Pittsburgh is not 37 degrees in yeah. Ringgold, Georgia. And yeah, was, you, you could have probably you could have probably put a cut in Kinsey's domino those things, huh? They were oh, so yeah. hard. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. They, were, they were poking through the sweatshirt. Oh yeah. I bad. forgot you went to Pittsburgh. How was it though? I mean, it was a sick game. It nice was good. Come back. Uh, I'll touch. Come back I'll in touch the cold. My two o heater because that was a uh, that was my two o heater cool. too, to, as a spoiler. So you know, Shook, I thought you were going a different direction. I thought you were going with something that that involved a Florida State alumni. I moved past it. Not that was crazy, it. dude. That was insane. Yeah, I mean, and so backstory for people who don't know, Florida State Shooks, obviously a big Florida State fan, had the number one recruit in the country. 
They're talking about flipping to Georgia, flipping to somewhere else, but he seemed pretty locked into Florida State. I mean, he's committed for, what, two years? Yeah. Well, like, solid, not. solid two years. Yeah. Yeah, and then he flips to uh, Deion Sanders at Jackson State. I mean, and it's hard it's hard to fault a guy, uh, a guy who literally is Deion Sanders. Like, he, he plays just like Deion Sanders, wanting to go play for Deion. So, but it's just wild how that happened. And I just I, – I thought that might be the hammer. No, yeah. I mean, I've kind of moved past it. I yeah. think that – you can never put a you can never put stock in a seventeen year old to see. No, so never. that and was kind of my thing about it. The best part of the day was, and I told y'all this in a group message, was that Twitter space that those people started. That got me hooked on Twitter spaces. Yeah. I was driving to Athens and I was listening to that space, and it was two. Are those like riders for Florida State that started that? Or just two random guys? Uh, yeah, they're so Josh Newberg is a 24 seven sports rider. Okay. Them. All right. I was wondering how they had so many people in there. Yeah. But dude, they were talking and, <laughs> and they would make you start out. Like there was only two speakers and they would like, you have to request to be a speaker. I was requested to be a speaker for, I don't even know what I was going to say, but I was requested to be a speaker for like an hour and a half on the way to Athens. I was just hoping I was going to get in. I did not, but they, they would make you start off by saying fire Mike Norvell. Like if you didn't say that, they would kick you off instantly. Like, some people would come on and, like, try to give reason and be like, no, nah, like, he still had a good class, blah, blah. They wouldn't get two sentences in. They'd kick them. They'd be like, no, nah, man, we don't have time for that. <laughs> yeah, <don't> so, <laughs> so that space was not Josh and TJ is the other guy that does it. That was not theirs. That was just some random one. I mean, there was, like, 6,000 people in there. Yeah, and it was hilarious. <laughs> I've, I've heard little snippets of it. It was like, awesome. Like, I was cra- it gave me entertainment for my entire ride to Athens. I was cracking up. My favorite part was when the guy goes, uh, why didn't we hire Dion in the first place? And he's like, you know what? We shouldn't hire the coach from Jackson State. We should hire the coach from Jacksonville State. <laughs> yes, that either. one was funny, too. <laughs> yeah, That's I was what I was, I was going to say something along those lines, like when Mike Norvell is fired, are they going to put like a statue of a grave that says Mike Norvell and then just have three letters, J-S-U, on the bottom? <laughs> <laughs> and that just pretty much sums it up. <laughs> yeah, whatever other JSUs there are out there, we don't need to play it. They need to schedule Florida State right now. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was wild, dude. But, yeah, like you said, I mean, people get so upset. Like, they take it personal. But these are 17-year-old, 18-year-old kids who just are trying yeah. to make it to the NFL. Like, going and play for Deion Sanders is probably never a bad move. Right. And signing an NIL contract with Barstool, that's worth like yeah, – I, I think that's a little made up, but – Is it? Yeah, like they're not going to pay – like what do they get out of that? Publicity. Yeah, yeah, but they get plenty, but I don't know. I mean, he might have an NIL deal with them, but technically with NIL you're not supposed to sign with gambling companies, so mm. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, I don't either. He's getting, he's making money. He's yeah, he's money. making money for sure. But everybody's making money. Everybody's been making money in college football. The people, Dion, Dion's probably that. paying them. Like, yeah. hey man, I'll pay you. There was, there was NIL in 2013. It yeah. just wasn't absolutely. legal. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Schnelly, three one breaker. Uh, yeah, like I said, I'll have a great one. Uh, this is kind of my flu game 2.0. Um, <laughs> Woke up feeling under the weather. It's and by under the weather, I mean I got like a head cold, you know, a little stuffed up. Um, but you know when you wake up in the morning and you feel sick, and then you're like, I'm gonna die. But then like you yeah, get out of off. bed and you start moving around, and yeah. you feel fine. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. But it sounds like it sounds like you needed to invest in the uh, the two for one combo Dayquil Nyquil from CVS. <laughs> you want me to go grab it? I got, I got it, it in my bed on standby. I got it on my bedside <laughs> table right now. <laughs> Yeah, I'm already on it. That's good. That's good. You got to get in the system. Yeah, you quick. have to. I'm pretty sure. I'm like, I would have a, I would have like a a foot ache when I was a kid. My dad would just be like, "I oh, go take some Dayquil." And my dad was like, "If, if you didn't feel if anything hurt or didn't feel good, he'd be like, yeah, Dayquil.'" And then, "Hey, Dad, like, I'm about to go to bed. Like, hey, my stomach hurts. So, hey, go take some Dayquil. You'll be all right." <laughs> like, keep getting cold yeah probably oh uh, yeah that's that's every time i get sick and i'm home my mom just jams stuff down my throat like i, I take so many pills and i'll just have like a simple like, yeah. cold. I'm, like <laughs> I, I'm probably gonna throw all these up <laughs> all right two oh heater mine's pretty easy obviously i'm an engaged man now uh makes life a lot easier you don't have to uh 
to really worry about any way you look, any appearance. You, they're locked in, you know. They were, she was asking me, is this picture good? I'm like, I don't care. I'm, <laughs> it, it doesn't matter anymore. I'm not trying to impress anybody. So, but yeah, also the plan worked. It was, it was big time. She was, so I've told her the whole day, like 3.30. We have to leave by 3.30. And I told her when we woke up that morning, I was like, no questions. 3.30, no questions. And she's like, okay. 3.25, she's contemplating an outfit change. I'm like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> you look great. I texted her roommate. I said, please tell her she looks good. And got her out of the house. I was like, oh, here we go. That's a vet move, texting the friend. Yeah, I knew she was going to ask. Yeah, so, that's a vet move. Yep, yep. So I got her out. Plan came together. Two-o heater. Sent it to the moon. Shook. Very nice. Two-o Shook. heater. Yeah, so I touched on it earlier. My trip was great. Uh, we saw a Penns overtime winner. That's sick. Um, it was, it was super cool. And uh, the Steelers game, I was telling my dad before this, and I've never been to – I've been to Atlanta – to see the Falcons. I've been to Nashville to see the Titans, but there is no way on earth that there's a better NFL fan base than Pittsburgh's. I told him that walking in, like you're literally surrounded by 80,000 of your best buddies. Like it's nuts. And so really enjoyed that atmosphere. Steelers won, obviously. Um, Big time win. So yeah, yeah. Um, Helped out the Colts. Would be to lose to the Vikings, beat the Titans. And then they've got the Chiefs this weekend will be a rough game. Um, be tough. And then – In Arrowhead? Uh, I think it's in Pittsburgh. Oh, they got a shot then. <clears throat> yeah. So. Tomlin is an underdog. You, you don't bet against that. Yeah. He's, he's unbelievable. He's you put that dog. plus sign on him, he's unbelievable. <laughs> what is it? Yeah. When he's an underdog on the road, he's like – it's, it's, it's the most ridiculous statistics yeah. ever. You're telling yeah. me about that. But, yeah, there's definitely some places I want to go see an NFL game because, like, you go to Atlanta and it's just whatever. Like, it's sad, but cause the stadium is awesome. Like, it's, it's pretty much the coolest stadium I've been in. And, you know, that's what happens when you put a pathetic product on the field. But yeah, the Steelers are in – or they're in Atlanta next year, so. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be great. It'll be, you know, <laughs> 80% Steelers fans. <laughs> we'll probably draft three offensive tackles first three rounds. Uh, but – I want to go to Steelers in Pittsburgh. I want to go to Buffalo and watch the Bills there. Those, those people are psychos. Yeah. And I do want to go to Arrowhead, too. Those are three sick places. But, heck, yeah. So, did you take the tour of PNC? Yeah, I did. And that was that was super cool. Um, yeah. They kind of had it scaled back a little bit. Like, they didn't let us go in the clubhouse. Yeah. But we got to go in the dugout down the little well that the players go in. That's, like, where the clubhouse is and the – yeah. Um, dugout. Uh, got to go in the press box, which was really cool. Um, it was kind of rainy, so like the pictures we took didn't really look yeah. that great. Because I mean, PNC is like a top three ballpark just with how mm-hmm. it's kind of laid Visuals. out, with the city in the background. But yeah. it was rainy and foggy, so you couldn't really see the skyline and everything. So, but yeah, it was super cool. Heck yeah, yeah. I just recently got into hockey too. Oh, did you? <laughs> uh, well, at, at Tucker Bradley, my friend Tucker Bradley's bachelor party, we were watching hockey. I've never watched it before in my life. It was sick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Great. So it, it's just an electric sport. And they got an overtime three on three hockey. That's mm-hmm. nasty. Right. That's that. That's what football needs to do. That's what NFL needs to do. Seven on seven. Seven on seven. Yeah, that'd be sick. <laughs> <laughs> at that three second sick. rush. Yeah. It's, it's like in, in recess. Yeah. yeah. Three Mississippi rush. <laughs> one Mississippi. I got the players. You just hear take him. Off. Mississippi, Mississippi, Mississippi. <laughs> yeah, you gotta count out loud, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Big time fights back at Boynton, huh? Shook. Oh yeah. <laughs> all right, Snelly, two heater. Um, all right. So my family every year uh goes to Illinois. So my dad's from Illinois, so we go over to Illinois to celebrate Christmas with his side of the family, usually the weekend before. So this past weekend we went to Illinois uh to my grandparents' house. And my brother, my uncle, and I made up a game in 2017. And it's called What the Puff. And so <laughs> we have so my grandparents had this big like checkers board, and the checkers are like that big around and so we came up with this game down in their basement they have an l-shaped bar in a long like runway on the long side of the l um and so we put um 
we mapped it out. We put a line in the middle and then we put beers in each of the corners. So there's a beer on this corner, this corner, a beer on the other side's two corners. And you take the puck and you flick it. And then we made up all these ludicrous rules and like, we'll do a bunch of pool play games and then we do a tournament and everything. And my aunt Katie has won twice. And then my my six, well, one of the years, my sister's ex-boyfriend won. So we vacated his championship and gave it to the second place winner, (laughs) which is my aunt Katie. The Reggie Bush. Yeah. So we we took that away from them. (laughs) And then my uncle Kelly, uh, my aunt Katie's husband. uh, So they've taken the title every year. I think 2017 was the first year, 2018, 2019, 2020. We didn't do it because COVID they got and a what then, the puck dynasty going on. Oh yeah, dude! I'm telling you, it's the most electric game you ever play. It's hilarious because something will happen. Should have videoed it. Something will happen every year. I think we have. I might have some. We might be able to get some content out there. Yeah. But, but every year something happens that we didn't expect to happen. Like this year, for example. Um, so each person was on each end flicking these pucks, and so one of them hit in the middle, came back and knocked the beer can off their own side. And so, like, we made a big deal. Everybody went crazy. And we're like, so we have to make up rules on the spot. And it's just hilarious. And everybody's yelling at my brother and my uncle. Um, But now that I've explained it, I won this year. So I brought the title back to Indianapolis. Yeah. Let's go. Um, We can clip this. And there's a picture of me with the trophy and uh, and all the jazz. So you need to to get us some video for it for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, Puck action. Oh, dude, I did. Speaking of, of sick games, I texted Paulson, and I'm going to bring my ping pong table back, and we're going to put it in the garage at, at Let's Get Tropical. <laughs> Will it fit? Yeah, it'll fit in the garage. No, I'm saying in your truck. Yeah, I'll fold it up. We it got the Burger fit. King, the Burger King crowd. <laughs> we got a lanyard. Nice. And then... You get your own puck every year if you if you win it. That's that's huge. That's a that's a big time haul coming back home. Yeah, back so, to home state. So uh, it's a big time win. Um, sh- I should have done a post game interview like you did. Yeah. Uh, big time. Well, I, I did, but I don't think anybody got it on video, which is which is sad. But big time post game um, after the engagement. Yeah. Check it out on Twitter. Don't be afraid to retweet it. Yeah, dude. So, just I don't know if y'all saw on my main Twitter. Um, I posted well, Trey Young got engaged the same day as me, so I, I posted some dumb thing like go hammer his prop bets because we got engaged on the same day. Well, they my friends had gotten just like a cheap bottle of champagne just to pop and for pictures. And dude, there's some people dogging me in the comments, they're like. You're gonna put thousands of dollars on her finger and buy a four dollar bottle of Andre. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, y'all need to relax. Like, yeah, that's funny. I mean, grow up. We get it. You're rich. Let's round of applause for people who are rich. Congratulations. Uh, you don't have to drink Andre. <laughs> yeah. So you're just going back to your roots. You right. like to go back to. Well, that's what somebody said. One of the comments was like. Uh, Tell me you grew up in – or tell me you went to school in Georgia without telling me you went to school at Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> so like, yeah, cheapest liquor stills you're, or you'll ever find in Athens. I mean, it's That's college. funny. You had to grind it out. Oh, yeah. But, uh, all right, good segment. Good segment. So we had some hammers, had some meatballs. Um, now for everybody's favorite segment. Schnelli, put us in a pickle. All right. <laughs> So, say you buy a piece of land, right? Yeah. So, I'm buying a, a three and a half acre lot, right? Yeah. How deep do I own the land? So, obviously, I own the land, what's on top, but do I own it all the way to the core of the earth? So, if I dig down, that's my land all the way to the bottom, or is there regulation on where my land stops? I should go in. I should know like, this from my down. real estate course, and I think there is. But like, if if you dig up oil on your land, like it's yours. Like people have to come pay you for it. So I assume you own. I've, yeah, I assume it goes just straight down. 
I should have known that you took a real estate class. I, I, I knew you did. I should have known you might yeah. have known that like an actual yeah, answer I, to this. Because there's certain, <laughs> there's certain like, like different things. If there's a pond on your land, do you own what's in the pond or you just own the land around it? Like you have to have water rights. I know for a fact you have air rights. So where the land that you own, you own everything up, up above it too. So for like people, for like a bridge or something, whoever owns that land has a grant of access for the bridge. Wow. I'm going to, so can I buy a bunch of land and then if a plane flies over my land, I pay, I, I make them pay me every time a I would, plane I would, flies over it. I would doubt that seriously, but I, I don't know. That should work. I'm going to do easement. that. A plane I'm going to buy the Yellowstone Dutton Ranch. And then every time a plane is flown over my land, I'm going to take. How often does planes fly over Montana? What route would they be taking? I don't know, but that was the biggest plot of land I could think about in, in the moment. Yeah. So. You called up? Speaking of, yeah, I was going to say, you, yeah, yeah. yeah. Heck yeah. Did you, watch, did you watch 1883, the first episode? Uh, I started it, but I would rather just watch it all at one time. So I was like, nah, yeah, you're just going to wait. Yeah. I'll just wait. I did. I, I like the beginning of it. Um, or I watched the whole first episode, 1883. It looks pretty good, but did you know they're doing another spinoff called the four sixes? I did not. What's that? Is it post or pre? It's a uh, like current. So it'll be about, this is what I, I watched. I saw a video that said this. So if I'm completely wrong, I could be, I'm not going to sit here and say this is for sure, but I heard that there's a, a new episode or a new series coming out called four sixes. And it's all about Jimmy in that ranch uh, yeah. in Texas. And it's going to be about like that whole ranch. Um, so Jimmy. it'd be interesting. Nice. Nice. You're a game of Thrones guy too, aren't you? Oh yeah. Is Like that prequel supposed to come out pretty soon, right? Yeah. I'm pretty sure. That'd be sick. Yeah. That'd be sweet. Be a bunch of dragons. Who didn't like dragons? I thought that I actually think that they stopped it. I thought it was had a release date. I think it did, but uh, maybe not. It it may be that they started to do another one and they spent like half of what their budget was on the first making the first episode. And so they were like, all right, I know there's a bunch of freaking CGI dragons or whatever. Yeah. I know that like, I remember hearing them talking about that last season, how much they spent on that alone, which is insane to me. Like in today's age with technology that that would cost that much. Yeah. Um, I'm looking it up. But we had a lot of, a lot of interactions talking about our boy who broke all the records, um, 200 plus world record holder. What was his name? Uh, Rick, uh, David Rush. Yeah, something like that. So I think it's David Rush. So we're definitely gonna we're definitely gonna try to break some of his records when we get back to spring training in Port Charlotte. We will get on that, uh, and then if we can break one, we will definitely reach out. Or if we can't, we will definitely reach out to him and try to get him on the show. How sick would it be if we go like YouTube live and he tries to break a record on our YouTube? That'd be sick. Yeah, um, David yeah. Rush yeah. is his name. Yeah. So. I mean, this dude's this dude's like on the Mount Rushmore of athletes. Like, it's like he's in the he's he's in my top five most like greatest like athletes. Michael of all Jordan. Time. It's, he's in the realm. Like, I, I don't want to just put four up there, but you know, you get Brady, Michael Jordan, Serena Williams, Michael Tiger Phelps, Woods, David Rush, Tiger Woods, yeah, Charlie, Charlie Woods. Woods. Have you seen Charlie <laughs> Woods, dude? That dude is unbelievable. Nails. Unbelievable. I watched the video. It was like, you know how when they played in it a couple of years ago, they did the like montage of them like doing everything exactly the same. Tiger and Charlie. Yeah. They did one for this I one. This it was like a yeah, a minute and a half. And it was like, oh my gosh. Genetic, He's man. so good too. Like unbelievable. He's good. gorgeous. Yeah. I saw somebody uh put a quote tweet on one of them, uh on like a video of him. Uh, hitting an iron shot and goes i've played golf for 60 years and i've never had it or i never made a divot like he made on that swing i can't make divots i just scoop everything <laughs> i wish i made divots if i take if i if i take a divot then i'm taking a hole out of uh, yeah it's a chunk yeah, yeah it's a straight <laughs> chunk yeah agreed but speaking of golf and and dl hits on it in the interview but we uh, we think we have a good idea so we talked about top golf 
Um, we're going to try to – anybody who's listening to this, and I don't know how many players listen to this, but if you – anybody who has a team that's in Florida, we are going to have a organization versus organization top golf off. And I hung out with my friends there last night, and they were playing um, – an angry bird. Have you been, have y'all been like recently? Uh -uh. There's one game mode. You can play angry birds. Yeah. Like they literally <laughs> sets up angry birds and you hit and It's like, you have a different bird and you hit it. So I'm thinking we do like a longest drive. We do like play pig to different holes. It's like somebody like gets at one and then an angry birds three on three. I like that. Yeah. Golf. And we already have our first challenger. Deal hits on it. Deal hall, Adley Rutschman, Grayson Rodriguez, power pitchers and one catcher. And so, if you think you have three that can beat those guys, step right up. We'll have to. We need who's going to be our three? Like Curtis. Who else is good? We need Curtis, Ford, Hill. Proctor, Hill. Uh, and then we could get if we need a long drive guy, Jackson McGowan. So he yeah, can, we'll, he we'll have to assemble a race squad. Uh, and then yeah, if you have a squad, let's let's do it. We'll freaking vlog it, make it a big deal. Uh, top golf on us. All right, so we'll get y'all over to the interview. It was awesome. Another Peach State boy, D.L. Hall. Uh, and this will probably be our last episode until after the new year. Got stuff coming up. And we're going to reload. We're going we're gonna to assemble all of our ideas over this next month, and, and we're going to throw it all in your face. So be prepared for that. Like and subscribe. Yep. Yep. All right, peace. We now welcome on yet another Georgia boy, D.L. Hall. D.L., what's going on? How's it going, man? Thank you for having me. Heck yeah! Thanks for coming on. Uh, we've been we've been stacking up some Georgia boys lately. Uh, between me, you, Emerson, Taylor Tremell, we've had a few. You got to get them in there. Show the people what it's about. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah! So uh, first off, congratulations on being added to the forty man. It's a big deal. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. You know, a little a little pay increase never hurt nobody. Yeah, but that's <laughs> yeah, minor league salary. Yeah, yeah, that it never hurt nobody for sure. Um, <laughs> but so I talked about so I think me and the first time I ever really talked to DL was was through a a friend of ours, Tony Losey. Uh, we were playing Fortnite one time. That's that's the first time I came in contact, and and you grew up with those boys down south, uh, Tony Losey, Jake Fromm. Those are your boys, huh? Yeah, yeah, they, you know, they were, uh, we met, me and Tony met through travel ball um, when we were 15, and uh, and then I transferred to uh, middle Georgia away from Valdosta, I transferred to Houston County, and uh, uh, Tony transferred in the next year, and of course, that's where Jake was, uh, you know, he was the, the superstar that he mm -hmm. is, and and we all three were just kind of, uh, you know, big athletes. So we, we became friends and <clears throat> and stuff like that. And then, uh, you know, we just kind of been friends ever since. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure you don't have any Tony stories for us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> one of a kind, huh? Yeah, yeah, definitely one of a kind. I could go on for days. And days. <laughs> I remember the, when I moved into Georgia, it was Tucker Bradley. He was, he was helping because I grew up with him. So he was there helping me move in and stuff and, he was just telling me about the team a little bit. He's like, yeah, we're all pretty much the same, like, you know, similar interests, like, except for Tony. <laughs> 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 and it sure enough was. Dude, I remember the second day we went and played pickup basketball, me, him, another guy, and then I was hanging out with him, and I was like, man, this guy is nuts. Hilarious. So. Death. Love him to death. Yeah. Bro. Yep. He is yep. One of the He's one of the most competitive people I've ever met, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he gets yeah. after it. Yeah. So, uh, speaking of South Georgia, I know, have you been back lately? Been able to do some shooting? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm actually, I'm in Valdosta right now. Okay. I'm, li I'm living, uh, I'm living at home this off season. Um, just cause of the injury and stuff, I was having to go back and forth to Florida a lot. So I uh, decided it would be best to just stay at home this year, a little bit closer to, uh, where I was going to have to be going, Sarasota, Florida. Um, yeah. cause last Last year, I lived up in New Jersey um, for the off season and trained up there. Um, so I wanted to be a little bit closer, and it just worked out better to be at home. So I'm building my own facility here. Nice. And, uh, training here, yeah. That's big time. Uh, always good to be home. 
I forget I forget how close South Georgia like is to like, places like Sarasota and stuff. How close is that to you? I'm, I'm like – it's like a four-hour drive. I can yeah. do it in like 340. That's 340. nice. That's big time. Uh, be, it'd be nice being Sarasota, huh, Schnelli? Yeah, Port Charlotte doesn't do a job. Yeah, Port, yeah. Port Charlotte is not the same. Not the same. Lord have mercy. Nah, people always are like, hey, just like drive up, drive up to Sarasota. When you get done with baseball, you don't want to drive 40 minutes, 45 minutes to go do something. You just want to stick around. And, you know, exactly. we got a, uh, we got like uh, a Hooters. <laughs> got a Hooters. Got a Chick fil A. <laughs> I, got the, uh, I got enough of the driving the one hour to Fort Myers and Fort Charlotte. Mm-hmm. And all- UCL, so I don't need any more of it. Bro, somehow every place in Florida is an hour away. Like, wherever yeah, you go, way. like, somehow everywhere, every place is one hour. It's like, yeah. it's like, can you come yeah, pick every- me up at Tampa? How long is that? Hour. What about Sarasota? Hour. I don't know how it's possible, but they're all an hour away. Yeah. Well, speaking on the injury, man, how's that coming along? Oh, uh, it's good, man. I'm, I'm like, uh, I'm progressing into my throwing and, uh, and working out, I'm getting pretty uh, pretty deep into it. I'm like, uh, I want to say I've been throwing for about four weeks now. Okay. Um, so it's it's nice to get back moving. But yeah, yeah every, everything's great right now. So just hoping it stays that way. Yeah, that, that has to feel good because it's kind of like you, man. I was we were both throwing really well at the start of the year, and like you know had a good start to the season. So hitting an injury bug like that really sucks. So I mean. I bet. So, how long would you go without throwing? Six months. Jeez. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a I long break, man. I haven't picked up – I haven't went that long without throwing uh, ever yeah. in my life. That's how I am right now. I had TJ beginning of September. So, just just not throwing and, like, not really having anything to do, I'm just completely out of my element. Yeah, it's tough, man. I, I went through a lot of – a lot of battles mentally and – all kinds of stuff, man. Just being off the field, it's it's a totally it's 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 something that people don't really understand, especially mm-hmm. if it's your first like big injury, which for me it was. I've had small stuff, but I mean, I wouldn't really consider it a big injury yet. You know, hopefully, because hopefully I won't have to have surgery or anything. Right. But taking six months off is pretty big to me. So mm-hmm. I uh, I'm just you know it was it was tough to deal with, but man, a lot of people sitting in that hotel room rehabbing every day <laughs> sitting in the hotel room the rest of the day for about nine hours yeah just going deep tough <laughs> because we spend so much of our life on a routine as baseball players like all we're doing is just you know throwing today throwing 120 feet tomorrow and then all of a sudden you're doing that and it's like okay well it's 12 o'clock and i have nothing else to do the rest of the day yeah, you've exactly. got to you've got to find something, and, and thankfully for me, like I had guys like Chanel and other dudes who I can hang out with during the rehab. Because if not, like those those days turn long, real quick, super long. Yeah, it was. I had my uh, my girlfriend lives with me, um, you know, during the season and things, and she was down there with me for like the first like two and a half months, and then uh, I went home. I had like a two week break where I got to go home, and then. She uh she ended up going back home and helping her mom, working with her mom. And so I was down there for like on and off for like three months by myself. And that was when it was like super mm-hmm. tough, just sitting in that room by myself every day. And just like, and uh, with how the Orioles are trending, like we have, I don't know, uh, you know, how you guys organization is, but like um, they, the Orioles, we've started moving people a lot quicker. So in the GCL, it's, it was nothing but, it was literally only, you know, 18 year old Latin players and like all their first times in America, which it's always heavy, you know, Latin down in Florida. Right. But this year it was like only Latin. So like I couldn't even, you know, hardly talk to them. And so I was basically really just down there by myself. Yeah. And I, I, I would, hang, I would still hang out with them, dude. I would sit at the table with the picnic table outside our hotel <laughs> where kind of, we all just kind of congregate at, I would sit out there with them for hours and, you know, just try and put pieces yeah. together of what they're talking about. <laughs> you got, you got to get some kind of you know, social <laughs> aspect. You just go crazy. But yeah. but you kind of hit on that. That's another thing. Like you see guys you've played with and, and it's just a competitor in you. You see them start moving up. 
and you're sitting there hurt, like that's, that's yeah. tough too, like mentally to deal with. Cause you're like, man, that like, I could be doing that right now. Yeah, man. My, my our whole double A team that I started the year with was in triple. Like, I don't know. There was probably, there was maybe five players that were still in double A by the time the end of the year came. They were all in triple. The whole team I was with basically was in triple A. So yeah. tough, but. I don't know. Yeah, part of it though. I mean, you know, that's, yeah, that's that's kind of how I feel. Once you go through that injury and and you, because I'm sure you were probably feeling a little bit while you were throwing during the time you were there, and it's just got get it past you and get moving forward. Because yeah, because as, as as bad as it sucks to be off, it really sucks playing while you're hurt. And yeah, so will you be good for spring training? Yeah, um, I'm, I started throwing off the mound in February, um, so I'll kind of I think I'll be like you know a little bit late. I think, or I wouldn't say late. I'll be I'll be off the mound, and I'll probably get in live uh, games before the end of spring training. But you know, I'll kind of be, I'll probably be pushed back a little bit, maybe like two or three inning starts for like the first couple starts of the year or something. I don't know that. All just me guessing, but right um, timeline. I think I'll I'll be a little bit behind, but I think I'll start on time. That's I mean, that's good. At least. At least the injury happened where you got to throw some innings a little bit last year, and it's not going to carry over much into this year. Hopefully. Yeah. It's never a good time for it, but if that's when it's going to happen, like, you know, never too bad. Yeah. But uh, I was creeping your social media a little bit. Uh, ran across a little windmill dunk action you did. You hooper back in the day? Oh, yeah, man. That's my, that's my, uh, that's my bread and butter. I, yeah. I love Well, Ever since I was younger, I've always loved it. That's, I mean, it's always been my number one sport. I love basketball, but I just didn't have the – in high school, I didn't have the size for it. I heard still, that. Still really don't have the size for it. I mean, NBA point guards nowadays are yeah. four. So. <laughs> yeah, I'd had, I'd had to been a shooting guard in college, and I was playing the center in high school, so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Would have translated, but we got we got Schnell on here who acts like he's a basketball player and didn't even play in high school. So I did he, two he years. I'm from don't. Indiana. All we do is hoop. Yeah, sure. <laughs> that's because you know that's where the hot spot of basketball is. Indiana. Everybody knows that. It is. Sure. You ever seen Hoosier Son? Yeah, it's a, we actually watched that last night. Just fantastic yeah. basketball. Movie. It's a great movie. Fantastic movie. But uh, so I'll let Shook jump in. Shook, I know you want to ask him a about Florida State. Yeah, so uh, uh, you were committed to Florida State for a while, uh, nearby, near Tallahassee there. Uh, I was scrolling through um, and looking at the rest of the class, or the rest of your class. Uh, C.J. Van Eyck was part of it, Tyler Ahern as well. Do uh, you ever wonder what could have been, like if you would have went to Florida State at all? Oh, yeah, man, all the time. I had uh, – I had – uh, those guys that, you know, I kind of – I knew them through playing, uh, you know, travel ball and things like that. So, I already knew those guys were coming. And then I actually have a teammate now um, who was in AAA this year. He was at a JUCO uh, the year before I was supposed to go. Um, and he was committed to Florida State as well, but he ended up signing with the Orioles. So, we would have been teammates either way. So, he would have been there. So, we always talk about, you know, like what if we would have went to Florida State together? you know, things like that. But, yeah, I, I think uh, I'm happy with the decision I made. I know it's a lot of trouble you got to dodge down in Tallahassee. Uh, <laughs> I spent a fair time down there. I know how much uh, how much fun happens down there. And uh, it's tough to, you know, it's tough to stay out of trouble down there. So, I might have yeah. made the best. <laughs> yeah, ain't no doubt. Yeah, I mean, I, I assume y'all just beat us worse than you did in the regional, if, if y'all had all been <laughs> there. <laughs> <laughs> freaking sucked but uh i remember hearing a story i think it was trevor keyboom he was telling me uh i think you'd come when florida state played in athens and you'd come with tony or something yeah yeah but tony yeah. had come down to the field and i guess y'all would walk through the dugout and you were just rocking the florida state uniform as you walked through there they're like who is this guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I that's how shook was so i grew up with shook and uh I pitched against Florida State in the in the regional championship, and I got rocked. And so I'm coming off the field, and I'm pissed off, and they're shook that me up in a Florida State jersey. Like, Good. <laughs> God. It wasn't that bad. I was just in a t-shirt, man. Come on now. <laughs> I was like, gosh, almighty. 
But uh, so obviously you go to Florida State, you take the visits, and I'm sure you knew a lot of people there. Uh, they're probably having a good time, and and you get drafted, and you go straight to the GCL. Was there ever a moment where you're like, oh, my God, what have I done? <laughs> oh, yeah, the whole time I was in the GCL, <laughs> thinking that, basically. I mean, I, I just uh, – I, I, everybody knows the grind. Well, I guess everybody doesn't. Some people right. are lucky, not experienced. Uh, some pro ball players are, are lucky enough to not go there, I guess. Probably y'all. I don't know. College guys. Yeah, yeah I went to high school in 18. So he, he's yeah, it was high there. school. Yeah, I got I got a little taste of the GCO as well. So I was down there for uh, I was down there for two months, a little over two months um, for my first year, and I, I'm not gonna say I hated every day of it because I was <laughs> pro ball, so like I was happy right to be, to be in pro ball. And, and things like that but as far as just like everything else it's I mean it's a grind it's it's literally the low I felt I was at the lowest point of my career and it had just started and I knew I was at the lowest like <laughs> it was only going up from there yeah. and I I also I had like a 9.9 .9 ERA <laughs> <laughs> like, terrible year well what was crazy though is I so I didn't throw up until the draft. I shut down right after the high school season, didn't keep throwing. So then when I sign, I go to Sarasota. Um, I, I go down there. They're like, we got to get you on a throwing program. Or they're like, you know, they wanted to put me in games. Right. They were like, we want to get you like two starts and then send you to Aberdeen. They were going to let me go to short season, even being a high school kid. Well, I said, look, I haven't picked up a baseball and I don't remember how long it was like, two months maybe or a month and a half two months and um and they're like all right well you got to do a throwing program so i start on the throwing program and by the time i get you know built back up there's like two or three weeks like three weeks left in the season so they just keep me in florida i get like i think three or four starts and i, I gave up one run the first three starts and then the fourth start I go out and I don't make it out of the first inning. I give up like five or six runs and like two homers in one inning. It's like the worst inning in my entire life. <laughs> and and I'm just getting rocked. And so my ERA, so like my first year of baseball cards the next year, all my like nice tops cards and everything, they say nine point nine seven ERA. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of terrible. <laughs> I'm like, whatever, man. GCL. <laughs> That's hilarious. It's just such a culture shock. And like now that I've been in it, like I have so much respect for people who've done it out of high school. Like, oh yeah. I would never tell Schnell I have any respect for him at all. But like <laughs> people people who come out of high school at that age, because I was I would have not been ready. Like I would have struggled in that setting. And I feel like you I would have figured it out. You always I, say that, but you would have Yeah, like I feel like I was a mature guy, but like something like that would have was really affected me because like I had my struggles in college and like everybody has their struggles as soon as they go to a new place, like you said. And luckily I, I had a college team around me like wanting me to be good. Like, yeah, you're mm -hmm. good, but like everybody goes through it. And then you're playing with guys who are like, wow, oh, this is our first rounder. He freaking sucks. Like, and you probably yeah. feel that a little bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was um, – I mean, it was – I had – it was good for me because, you know, like I had to grow up. I had to grow right. up quick. Um, but, see, like that was the big thing. Like they – the Orioles, like, you know, when I first signed in uh, to pro ball, like they've had a lock on me. I mean, basically every year just like – being from Valdosta and like um, a lower income area and like things like that, like they've, they've always like kept a close eye on me, which like I appreciate, you know, it gets annoying sometimes, but I appreciate it at the same time. It's like, yeah. um, but they just, they were like real skeptical, like, Oh God, what's he doing? What's DL doing? <laughs> like, we, you know, so it gets annoying sometimes, but like being 18 years old and, and, and signing for some money and things like that is like, like they didn't, uh, you know, they, they kept a close eye on me and just really monitored everything I did uh, for the most part. And uh, I hated it at first, but, you know, I saw, I saw, I see now that, you know, it was probably, it probably helped me in the long run just because, yeah. I mean, 
there's no, I mean, I know what I was thinking about doing that sometimes, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, so, 100%. I'm glad, you know, I'm glad that I had that, uh, you know, but hey, it is what it is. <laughs> this, this is the thing I just thought about, and yeah, I'm sure y'all can speak to this, but I bet coming out, so like you're 18, you sign, and, and I'm sure they took you to a game where you signed for mm-hmm, the Orioles. Yeah. So I bet, I bet you're just on cloud nine and you feel so close to the big leagues. And then all of a sudden you go straight to the GCL and you're like, I'm not even close. Like, oh, yeah. I, <laughs> I'm not even spin yeah. distance. <laughs> oh, yeah. About, my, my dad talks about – my dad and my grandpa, they're always talking about that because they flew up there with me to sign. And uh, and they're always talking about like, yeah, you know, they fly you up there for first class. You know, you're in the stadium. You're in the suite eating crab cake. All you can eat crab cakes. Like – this is great, right? You're on top of the world. And then the next day you're on a plane to Sarasota and I get down there and I'm staying at the La Quinta. uh, And, and, uh, and I'm surrounded by a bunch of guys that, you know, that can't, that I can't even communicate with. And so like, it's definitely, I mean, it's just like, and it's 105 degrees at 12 o'clock first pitch. And I'm just I'm out there dying. <laughs> Pitching char- fans are are chasing foul balls, and I'm yeah. like, God, worse. <laughs> <laughs> what was your guys' uh, living situation for the GCL? Did you guys get like apartments, hotel, or what? Uh we we're in the La Quinta Inn and Suites. We're still that's where there. you guys stayed the whole time. Still there to this day. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. So they don't let y'all move off. Y'all are there. Um, well, they do, but the pat last year, you know, with COVID and yeah. then this year, um, this year spring training was still COVID protocols. We had to stay in there. Um, and then I was down there rehabbing and they bas- basically, this, <laughs> so this is kind of putting it out a little bit, but anyways, they basically say, Hey, you're going down to Sarasota to do rehab. So they're going to pay for my, they're like, we'll pay to break your lease in your apartment in Maryland. And, or, or you handle that and we'll pay for your living in Florida for rehab. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, y'all are paying for my living. I'm like, all right, I'll handle the, the apartment, whatever. So I pay the apartment, go to Florida for rehab and they're paying for me to stay in the La Quinta. <laughs> <laughs> and, so that's where I ended up staying for my rehab too. So, oh man, I love that because we spoke on that before. Just how like much of a hassle it is when you get moved to like deal with your lease. You're like, dude, I'm just yeah. screwed to this thing right now. Yeah. Me, my two dogs, and my girlfriend were in the <laughs> about four months, three months. So. <laughs> what kind of dogs you got? Two hound dogs. <laughs> yeah, nice. can they track them down? Nah, nah. One of them's rescued. I rescued him. Um, and then the other one I got is a red bone coon hound. And all my, like, my buddies that do hunt deer and stuff, they're like, you need to teach him to track deer, blah, blah. Well, turns out he's a little bit special. Um, <laughs> he's not, uh, he's not, built. he's not quite built for hunting. So, <laughs> so they're yeah. just in dogs, man. Everybody asks me that. Though. <laughs> dogs. Yeah. I think they, I mean, they're really smart, but I don't know enough about hunting to even try and teach them. So yeah. they're just, I just love hounds' personality. Yeah, feel that. So, uh, <laughs> so you go for the GCL, and I'm sure you're glad to get home. I'm sure you had to go to Instructs, all that jazz, and and so then the next year you get you go to a full season Del Marva. So what was that like? Finally getting to go up there and kind of experience in minor league for the first time. Oh, uh, it was great. I mean, basically. You know, just like anybody else's uh, first time pitching in a stadium, you know, in pro ball. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was it was awesome. Uh, we had a great team. We had, like, a historic start to the season um, that year. So, it was, like, it was a lot of fun, you know, a lot of energy surrounding us and stuff. Yeah. Um, I ended up having a really good year. Um, you know, I battled – I battled some, some – uh, control things at the beginning of the year but the second half I I ended up having like a I had like a three or a four four something in like the first half and then I had like a point seven in the second half so I ended I ended up finishing like a two 
two something ERA, low two ERA that year. So I was like feeling great, um, you know, about my first full season and all. And I stayed there the entire year. Didn't didn't move. I'm like, <laughs> the second half, I, it was just one of those, you know, hot streaks in the second half where you feel, you know, great. Felt like felt unhittable. Like felt like I was getting everybody out. You know, I'm pitching to like a point seven ERA in the second half, and I'm like, all right, maybe I'm gonna get called up. Maybe mm-hmm. I'm gonna. And they're like, nah, dude, you're 19. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, dang it! So I ended up uh, staying there all year, but it was still a ton of fun, and you know it was everything you think of. Um, we got some cool places in that league. So what league was is that? It's called what is it called now? I think it was called the S- South Atlantic League. Yeah, because I think they're part of the Carolina League now. Because I was in that league this year. They were yeah, the, yeah. they're the northern part because I never went there, but I think South they're Atlantic, there now. South Atlantic League and. I don't know. I don't know what it's called now. So would y'all go all the way down to Charleston to play? Were they in y'all's league? We went to Ro- we went to Rome, Georgia to play. Oh god. Yeah, so yeah. same league. That's a hot. Yeah, so the high high split into the South Atlantic League split between high east, which is like Rome, uh yeah. Winston Salem, teams like that, and then the rest of them went to the Carolina, Carolina League, league. all around in Charleston, yeah. That's a haul. That's that's welcome to minor league bus trip right there. Uh, my, so yeah, so going back to that, it's my first full season in pro ball, and we had the most hours traveled of any minor league team that year. <laughs> 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 we had, we had half the Rome, we had whatever it was to uh, Char- Charlotte, no, not yeah. Charlotte, uh, Charleston. Yeah. Then um, we went to South Carolina. At least, I mean, we had to. We were at, we were playing at what's that team? Uh, White Sox, Low A. Yeah. Uh, Annapolis. Annapolis. We were. We, went, we played in Canapolis. It had to have been like twelve times we played. <laughs> we were traveling there every weekend. It felt like we were traveling there every weekend. It was just, man, it was brutal. I remember. Uh, I remember the uh, our our manager called the uh, like I guess the president or whatever of the league and was like. Man, did you really have to give us the worst travel of the entire minor leagues? <laughs> <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. I got popped by the dip police that year, my first year in pro ball. <laughs> <laughs> what, was, yes. <laughs> what kind of fun was that? Uh, so it was a five. It was five hundred for me and a thousand oh, for my. Oh my gosh! They our managers, but your first offense, they give you the option to do counseling. So yeah, so I got uh. I got popped by the tobacco police, and um, but anyways, it was like five hundred. Uh, it was me and one of my teammates. It's five hundred dollars a player, and then a thousand <laughs> for a thousand for your manager, and you have to pay your manager fine, or you can do counseling the first time, and it gets all the f- the fees wiped away. So I had to do counseling, and uh, you know I did my counseling, and I quit dipping uh, like a week later. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's big of you. Yeah, <laughs> that's a warrior. The warrior got, right there. Uh, I got my uh, my certificate uh, <laughs> of completion for uh, my last use of tobacco <laughs> was like June seventeenth, two thousand eighteen, nice. or something. Like that. <clears throat> Somewhere around. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, tobacco free, baby. Yeah, I went tobacco free a week later. So. <laughs> I was able to I was able to kick it pretty quick uh, with the phone calls with the counselor and everything. Oh, uh, they were over the phone. The counseling was. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So yeah. It helped me out, you know, and I got to move past that point. And uh, <laughs> nah, but I ended up. Uh, I actually did quit about eight months ago. Nice. Um, so I did it for seven years, and I quit about eight months ago. So. But that was tough. That was my tobacco police encounter, and uh, ever since then, I've I've tried extra. Uh, if you want to hear how I got caught, it's pretty. So I'm sitting in the bullpen. Um, one of our starters is warming up. I was watching him warm up. I'm standing by the uh, by the catcher, just watching him, and uh, and he's like, he's got his dip can like sitting between his feet, 
And he's like, hey, Dio, hold this. And he tosses it to me. And I catch it, put it in my back pocket. And, you know, like, if they uh, – if they if the tobacco police um, write you up or whatever, they have to have a picture. So the picture they sent me is me and my catcher – or the catcher walking back to the dugout with the dip can in my – like the cir- – you can see the circle in my back pocket. It's literally a picture of me turning around the other way, and you can see the circle in my back pocket. And he popped both of us. And uh, that same game, we found out in, like, the second inning, they're like, the, the dip police here, the dip police here. And we're like – they were like, he's going through the locker room right now. And we're like, oh, we're good. Like, you know, everybody's good. We had already been popped before the game. <laughs> <laughs> and then What a after, job. After the game, yeah, after the game, our manager calls us in there. And, uh, and uh, I'm thinking, like, maybe we're getting called up or something. You know? <laughs> And we go in there. He's like, "Yeah, you guys gotta uh, do. You guys gotta pay fifteen hundred dollars, or you're gonna do counseling." And I was like, "All right, I'll do counseling." So I hung up. What did the catcher decide to do? What did your catcher decide? Did he pay or did he do counseling? He did counseling too. It was only. It was literally like. Well, he was. His took longer though because he told like he basically, from what I understood, he he basically told her that. Um, you know, he was still dipping and stuff. Like, I told her from the jump. I told the counselor from the jump. I was like, "Look, I don't even dip. All right, I just, I was just holding the can for him. I was like, you didn't catch me with one of my lip or none of that, or they didn't catch me. I was like, so I don't even know why I'm talking to you. I don't dip. I was like, I do it every now and then, you know, blah blah. blah. So I was trying to bullcrap my way out of it the whole time, and and he. So it took me like four phone calls before she just wasn't calling me no more. And it took, it took, he was like, he was like, dude, I talked to her for like a month. I'm like, well, that's your fault. Like, you <laughs> I said, look, I said, look, I, man, I have no urge to put tobacco in my mouth anymore. And so she sent me a certificate of commitment and, and a bag of Jolly Ranchers. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So it was just like, did she plan these calls or she just called and you had to pick up if she called? Uh, we we had them planned. A lot of times I didn't. I would have to call her back. You know, like yeah. And then some days I, some days I didn't really feel like speaking to her. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, oh, <I> mean, <laughs> nice. Yeah, I have, I have a funny tobacco story. So we when I was at Tournament of Stars, my roommate was Carter Rathfield. And do you know him at all? Yeah. 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 I don't know exactly. And he, so we were there and he, the people were really cool. We stayed with last to same session. So they were talking to us a little bit. It was a younger couple and they're asking some stuff and they asked us if we drank or dipped. And Carter's like, yeah, I dip. And she's like, Oh no, please don't tell me that. And the husband's like, you know what she does, right? We were like, no. And he's like, she works at Duke on, on tobacco prevention. So she had him, she had him wearing a patch <laughs> the rest of the week trying to get him to stop dipping. <laughs> hey, it, was, it was awesome. That's so a patch. He'd be dipping in the shower trying to hide it from her. Well, Cos, tell him the tell him my story. You're better at telling it. Oh, we were in Charleston and Chanel had the day off. And I do not dip, let's just say that. Yeah, and he was sitting there and, and John Doxak has had some Zen packs. And Snell was asking about him. He's like, hey, everything good? And he's like, yeah, they're pretty good. And he's like, all right, I'll put one in. So he puts one in, and I see him over there, and he's got his head down. and He's wiping. Not at first. I was loving yeah, life Yeah, it's a little, bit, a little like, bit later. He's wiping sweat. And like, he's not really talking much. He's getting pale. And I'm like, you good? He's like, no, dude, I'm hurt, and I got to spit this out. So he spit it out, and then he disappears for like a half inning, and he comes back and he had yacked in the locker room. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm I'm on the way back to the locker room, and at Charleston, it's like a tunnel. Yeah, I know. Exactly. Yeah, and so I was walking back, and there's a gate with all the like tractors or like dirt and stuff back there. And I'm on my way because I was like, I gotta take a shit like bad. <laughs> and and so I was like, okay. And I got to the fence. I was like, I'm not gonna make it. And I turned the corner yacked and then went straight up to the bathroom pooped grabbed some food some water i'm drinking as much water as i can i'm like oh my god this is horrible so 
that ended my dip in prayer. I wasn't. Yeah, those zins are those zins are pretty strong too. I mean, that that's what helped me. Like I, I dipped for seven years, and I just decided to quit. One of my teammates said he was quitting, and I was like, "I'm gonna quit with you." And then he ended up. He lasted like a week, but I was like, "I'm gonna stay." With you. I was like. <laughs> And I started using those Zen pouches, bro, and they helped me out a lot, really. So that's how I know that they must be pretty strong because all those other things that they give you to try and help you stop don't work. <laughs> Not Jolly Ranchers? <laughs> yeah, Jolly Ranchers ain't cutting it. <laughs> <laughs> that's good stuff. That's funny, though, because my uncle tried to stop dipping for a while, and he had Jolly, he always had Jolly Ranchers in his truck, dude. I mean, always <laughs> in his house, everywhere, Jolly Ranchers. Yeah. But yeah, it didn't last, so clearly that's not the freaking trick. <laughs> but, uh, oh, that night I was hoping so bad. I wasn't hoping somebody got injured, but I was hoping you'd have to pinch hit or something. I literally was thinking to myself, I was like, if someone gets hurt and I have to, like, go hit, I was like, I'm so screwed. I was like, this is bad. Yeah, that was not, not, a, good, not a good night, but, uh, you know. So, so you finished out the year in Delmarva, and then – the next year you go to Frederick, is that right? Yep. And you spent the full year there too? Yeah, yeah. I, I was um, – another year that I'm like – well, honestly, I wasn't even – I wasn't even considering moving up um, yeah. just off of the first half of the season I had. I mean, if you look at my season totals, I had 50 – it was 51 – it was either 51 or 52 walks in 80 – 80 innings. <laughs> That's like my college stats, yeah. Uh, so, man, it was just like – but, like, Frederick, let me just say, love the town of Frederick, love the people, so no disrespect to anybody, but the worst place to pitch in the entire world. I mean, it's – we had a kid – we had a kid hit a home run. It says 315 down the lines which is already short. I mean, for – these are like eight-foot fences. So, it's already short down the line, 315. We had a kid hit a, a ball. It measured 305 on track, man. It measured 305 on track, man. Been out. <laughs> that sucks. Well, that is the I, absolute worst. It, it was the second – it was the second highest uh, home run – park in all of the minor leagues i think the only one that beat it was one out west where the ball is supposed to right. you know, fly that, that and sucks. and we're we're in frederick maryland giving up just absolute <laughs> on i mean just horrible it was it was terrible it really was it was a horrible place to pitch um but like i said it was a great pl- I, I actually love the town stuff but yeah so the first half of the year there i spent a lot of time trying to figure myself out as a pitcher I was going through a lot of changes um just like with I kind of started throw I always threw hard but I started to throw a little bit harder um so I started to have a little bit you know of command a little bit more command issues um kind of like going back to my my high school days and then um the second half of the year I made, like, one small adjustment, and I ended up having, like, another second half like I did the year before. And so, <clears throat> I'm like, God, man, like, why can't I just do what I do in the second half, the first half, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, I ended up having a, a good second half and finishing out, you know, all right. Um, but the, it was, yeah, that was one year. If there was one year of Pro Bowl I could forget about, it would probably be that year. Yeah. <laughs> It just turned long and, quick. Uh, and I missed the last month of the season with a lat injury. So, so a forgettable 19. Yeah, yeah, 19. <laughs> Easy well, to... I mean, yeah, it does suck, like, not being able to put it together for a full year. But you would much rather do it in the second half of the year than the first half if you had to choose. So that's oh, yeah. At least. And making the, making the adjustments and, and doing that, I'm sure the team likes to see that at least. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. So where was y'all's alt site in twenty? <laughs> we were in Bowie at our double A. Okay. Um, at our double A place. Um, that was where I was at in twenty. How'd that go? It was great. Um, I had, I know, it wasn't really a you know a season, of course, but 
Um, I went up there. I trained at home all summer until they called me and was like, hey, you're going to the alternate site. Reported up there. Um, I couldn't even tell you when, but I I ended up get. I probably had like – I had – 10 to 15 outings um, at alternate site because we were just – we were inner squad It was every day. Um, yeah. So, basically just keeping, you know, those guys ready and everything. And uh, it was my first time hitting 100 that year. Um, and I – actually, I, I lost my grandpa, so I flew home and then uh, for that. And then I came back and I had – so I had like a week and a half break. And I just remember I'd hit 99, like, quite a few times. <clears throat> and I uh, I fly home. I have, like, a week and a half break. So I go back and, like, I'm fresh, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> feeling great. <laughs> so my first live back, I come back, and I was actually facing one of our – I think he was 18 at the time, prospects that was there. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, because it was his first year. Yeah, it was his first year. And he – uh. He came in the box, and I go, like, I think, like, second pitch, I hit 100, and I'm, like, super hyped, whatever. And then I get two strikes on it, and I bump a 102, and I'm, like, <laughs> maybe maybe, maybe that was just – no, sorry, I didn't bump 100 before that. I bumped a 102 first, and I'm, like, all right, maybe that's – but it was, it was on the track, man. They had it on the board and whatnot. I'm, like, maybe that's just, like, you know, a misreading or something. And then, like – um two pitches later I hit 100 and then like the next batter I hit 101 and I'm like let's go like you know I was, <laughs> I was all I was super fired up for that um, and I and I threw really well and I got to be around you know the older guys yeah and learn, learn a lot of stuff um in that year so it was really a huge development year for me to be honest it was it was great yeah. Yeah, I say the same. It's it's a big deal to be able to to pitch in that environment and, and like you said, learn stuff and and learn how to adjust because you're facing the same guys. But yeah. I mean, if you're popping 102, I guess that gives you a lot of confidence. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, that yeah. hurt. Facing those, uh, you know, facing the a lot of with how the you know you see how the Orioles are right now. It's a lot of you know up and down. So like, it's you know, kind of just filling spots and things. So, I mean, every day we were facing, you know, big leaguers. Right. Uh, you know, guys that had years and years of time. Um, so, it was cool, you know, to get to experience that and kind of have to, you know, make, like you said, make some adjustments. Yeah. So, I mean, you've only been with the Orioles, obviously, your whole time. And you kind of – when you got drafted, it was kind of like the start of the rebuild, right? Like, you were, they were just starting to, like, really go into it. So – have you seen just like the talent and within the org just really grow over the past couple of years? Dude, it's crazy. I I tell I tell everybody this, like not just to, you know, toot my organization's horn, because I promise I'll be the last one to do that sometimes. But <laughs> um, <laughs> as far as talent goes, you know, we <clears throat> we do we've accumulated so many players, you know, just with like this year we have the first overall pick again and that blows yeah. my mind. I mean, I can't look like we're – it's crazy to me we're getting another 1-1 because I think we – I think – I'm not 100% sure, but I think we got ranked in, like, the number one farm system. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not – don't quote me on that. But, I mean, we, we have, like, our double-A team this year at the beginning of the year was unbelievable. Um, we started off, like, really hot, and our triple-A team was really good. Um, I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. We, we really are – you know, especially coming from 2017 when I first got here, we didn't really have anything. Like, it was nuts. And then, you know, we got a whole new front office, everything, and it started building back up. So, it's been – I mean, it's been really cool to see, like, all the talent we've gotten. Um, just, I mean, arms and, and position players. It's it's pretty cool. So, I'm excited for it. Thank you. Hey, you're talking Tell about your story, the- now. Yeah, I was about to say, I was, before you hop back on, uh, I was telling Wilcox this story. Um, I forget, When was it, Wilcox? I th- the way I understood it, when Sampo was telling me, it was the COVID instructs when everybody Maybe was Maybe it was, it was either spring training or the COVID instructs, but uh, there was a group of older guys going to play a game against you guys. And, like, 
when we when we have gone down there, like we we usually play pretty well, stuff like that, or up to you guys. And so they get back, and I'm like, "How'd you guys do? Like, how'd it go?" And they're like, "We don't want to talk about it." And we're like, <laughs> "What?" And they're like, "Yeah, um, either you or Grayson started." And they're like, "Yeah, DL started." So that went great. I- he was pumping. He was, was pr- pumping smoke, yeah. <laughs> and then they're like, then they bring in Grayson Rodriguez, and he absolutely <laughs> carved us up. And so everybody came back and was complaining. And I yeah. just, I was dying laughing. <laughs> remember that. I remember that game. Uh, we found out that me and Grayson were throwing in the same game, and uh, everybody was super fired up. And it was it was pretty cool that, you know, they were like, uh, I was talk- I feel like I talked to someone from y'all's organization. Uh, that day, like at the field or something, and they're like, "This is bullshit, bro." He's like, <laughs> <laughs> "He was like, you got a lefty throwing a hundred, and then you bring in a six five righty throwing a hundred. It's like, what the? Fuck? That's awesome. Just love them all. That's good. <laughs> yeah, was, I remember they got back. I was like, "How'd it go?" They were like, "We don't want to talk about it." I was like, what? It, like what happened? They were like, "Well." First, we saw a lefty throwing 100, and then we saw a righty throwing 100. I was like, did you guys win? They are like, we didn't even put up a run. I was like, yeah. I remember, I forget who I was talking to, and they were, something was brought up about prospects or something. And he's like, oh, well, the Orioles have two pitchers who are definitely going to be in the big leagues. He said, because I watched them pitch both against us, and we had no chance. <laughs> That's hilarious. But uh, we were talking also when you went off, we need to set up a day during spring training. And we need – because I saw you playing top golf the other day, hitting bombs over there. Um, they need to set up a day where, like, the people we've interviewed, like, so you bring your guys, we'll bring some raised guys, each have a box and have a competitive top golf night yeah. against yeah. the organizations. Yeah, we sick. should. I'll bring Adley and Grayson. They can both bomb it. Yeah, that's what we need. Just have to see if you can hit the freaking furthest and then yeah, <laughs> we'll just have yeah. a good time doing that. We'll have yeah. to set that up for sure. Yeah we'll, yeah, we'll get it. We'll get it going. But, uh, dude, really appreciate you coming on. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, man. Thank y'all for having me, bro. I enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> everything keeps going well with the rehab and stuff. We're pulling for you. And uh, hopefully, we see you here in spring training. Yeah, bro. No doubt. All right. Be good, brother. Appreciate it, guys. See ya. Yeah, see ya.